Okay, uh, so I'm live with uh, DM Office Hours on Twitch, and I'm going to prepare for Wednesday night's game. So this is the 14th, I'm preparing for a game on the 16th, and I'm going to be using the One Page One, page one Shots uh, toolkit uh, to do that. So first thing, um, I've got my rollable tables, my noun-based preparation rollable tables, and I'm going to grab my trusty copy of the Spontaneous Dungeon Master's Companion. And we're going to go at this. So um, first thing I need is a focus adjective and a focus noun. So let's do a d6 for the focus adjective. That is a two. Focus adjective, powerful. Powerful. And then a focus noun, another d6. Focus is a powerful location. OK, a powerful location. That's interesting. Um, some examples of powerful locations. Um, I've I've set up a, a bunch here in the in the toolkit. Um, proper locations: a floating city held aloft by magic crystal, an abandoned alchemist at lab, um, a location in the Shadowfell, somewhere powerful um, uh, that is a that is a physical location. So, a powerful location. That's a good start. I feel like I need um, I need the actual setting kind of next to be able to know what what this noun is, what this powerful location is. So let me get another d6 going for the setting. And that is a four. Ruins, mines, sewers, etc. Uh, so a powerful location that is a man-made dungeon. That is a powerful location. Okay, that's interesting. Um, let's see what uh, what else might factor into this. Well, let's um, let's look at the mission uh, next. So I'm starting to try to form a picture here. What's my mission? I did another D6. Uh, a two. Uh, destroy. To destroy a powerful location. Okay, so we've got a destroy mission inside a powerful uh, man-made dungeon, like a, a ruins or something like that. Um, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and let's get me some inspiration going here. Uh, so I'm going to head over to the dungeons section of the uh, Spontaneous Dungeon Master's Companion. Uh, we've got the five room dungeons approach. We've got some different maps here. Uh, what is going to spark my creative interest? Uh, dungeon encounters, items, treasure and magic, the traps, puzzles, riddles, etc. Uh, let's do a dungeon dressing. So let me just get it, gr grab a d20. Um, in this particular location, 20 out of 20 is eerily Silent. Okay, so now now we're on to something. Um, an eerily silent man-made dungeon. Um, okay, how about a how about a prison of silence? Um, the prison of silence is a powerful location. Um, Spellcaster prison of silence. Uh, so something. Uh, Spellcaster prison of silence. And you must destroy um, the orb of silence within uh, in order to rescue uh, someone or something. Spellcaster Prison of Silence. Uh, destroy the orb of silence uh, that binds. Um, what is it going to bind? Uh, some kind of. Well, let's see. Maybe there's a creature that relies on that relies heavily on sound. A creature, certainly spellcasters, need often need a verbal component. So the spellcaster prison of silence kind of makes sense there. Um, but let's see if there's maybe a creature that could be bound within this. Um, an elemental, um, a ghoul, a gith. Uh, I'm looking for something, you know, not necessarily evil that could be bound within this silent prison. And uh, let's see, what am I coming up with? Uh, sprites, a giant sphinx. Oh, a sphinx, OK. These are kind of pretty fun. Um, ancient tepul sepulchers and vaults and stuff. Um, a sphinx that is trapped within this dungeon of silence could be pretty interesting um, yes a sphinx trapped within um, 
Sphinx trapped within the prison of silence. Um, Black and that, I'm thinking that could work. Uh, what else am I thinking it could work? Sphinxes are very um, like desert specific, but you know we can go anywhere. This is a one shot, right? Um, so let's see if there's something else we can finagle with this. Um, I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with a Sphinx, an Andrus Sphinx trapped within uh, that binds the Andrus Sphinx. Uh, that binds what's his what's its name? Uh, let's get a great name for the Andrus Sphinx. That'll help me, I think. Um, that's, I'm going to go to the NPCs table, and I'm going to go to the um, other section. So let's give me a D10. A 10 out of 10. Yinkas the Furbolg. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to go with an anagram of that. Um, uh, Inkyas. Inkyas. I think yes, the Andrew Sphinx. It binds Inkyas the Andrew Sphinx um, to to the prison confines. Okay. Um, uh, the um, so what kind of what kind of prison? Um, well, let's look up some. Let's get some synonyms for prisons going. Um, so I just Google up synonyms for prison. Um, guardhouse, lock up the penitentiary. Um, penitentiary is kind of good. Um, Bastille, stockade. Like penitentiary, penitentiary of silence uh, is a spellcaster prison. Penitentiary of silence is a spellcaster prison. Um, spellcaster prison, and uh, there's an Andrew Sphinx in there named Ikias. Let's put an I in there, I-N-K-I-A-S. Petrus Science is a spellcaster prison. Um, great. Well, that's going to be interesting. If uh, if there's going to be um, zones of silence, uh, zones of wild magic. Um, so this is this is a place, uh, an ancient place. Let's say it's um, uh, ancient netherese um, uh, prison. Um, smooth uh, stone, um, black stone, um, arcane writing. When in doubt, always add some arcane writing on the walls. Um, Netherese prison, smooth black stone, arcane writing, um, and it is um, uh, has um, zones of wild magic, dead magic. And silence throughout, um, so that it's uh, it's going to be interesting for our spellcaster buddies. Um, uh, also filled with with traps and magic guardians. Uh, so all of the inhabitants of you know all of the living beings have long since um, left this place. We've just got. Um, Magical guardians, magical traps, this kind of thing. So why do they need to destroy the Herb of Silence and rescue uh, the Andrew Sphinx? Well, this is really kind of a two-downer, right? Um, so it's a spellcaster prison, and Inkyas um, uh, holds the key to something. Um, let's see, Andrew Sphinx um, tests people's courage and valor. Um, uh, they're sort of sort of a divine guardian, an extra planar being. Um, uh, some sphinxes break free of their divine command. Um, yeah, I think um, the Andrew Sphinx can interpret something for them. Okay, so um, their their mission to free him um, 
is to Andrew Sphinx, uh, named Inkyas. Uh, is the only one who can interpret um, the strange symbols in the sky above um, above Waterdeep. Um, okay, so this is going to be set. Um, Forlorn Hills. The one I'm venturing too far from home. So in the Forlorn Hills, uh, this ancient Netherese prison. Uh, he's the only one who can interpret strange symbols in the sky above uh, Waterdeep um, as they're in a long forgotten language. Um, so the party uh, is being sent um, to free Inkyas uh, or to ask for his. Um, interpretation of these symbols um, so they they will be they will be given um, uh, so in case um, interpret the symbols okay, so he's the only one that can interpret these symbols So one of the rewards uh, is from their um, uh, their faction patron. Uh, their faction or patron will um, uh, will um, will thank them. Uh, or actually, let's say uh, Mert, the money lender, um, will reward them with esteem and or money. Um, they'll learn the secrets of the penitentiary. Um, those are those are kind of the main uh, rewards. Uh, I mean, a legendary being. Perils, again, uh, traps, magic guardians. Um, and... Um, Guardians basically are the things they're gonna um, they're gonna encounter. And what's the secret of twist? Um, probably something to do with. Um, well, let's let's roll one up. Let's roll a d20 and let's see what kind of twist we got going here. Four. One of the narrators was unreliable. Okay, so the mission they were given, it was unreliable. There was something unreliable about it all. Um, let's say, I don't think it's Inkyas himself is unreliable. Um, the story, though, uh, is that Inkyas um, was imprisoned here as a guard. Um, But um, due to um, uh, betrayal of the of the co of their code, um, code of honor. So uh, Incas was not just a guard that was left there, but he betrayed the code of honor, um, and therefore, uh, even though he'll be rescued, he doesn't feel himself worthy of leaving this place. What do we got? So definitely combat. Definitely exploration. Uh, magic items are always great. Monsters, at least in yes, and, and, and sort of constructs anyway. Social skills. Um, if you're going to do a Sphinx, you're going to have puzzles. I think you got to have puzzles and let's have some traps. Um, so not any investigation or chase scenes. Those are typical of uh, city settings. Um, they betrayed their code of honor. And as a result, um, what? Um, will not, will never leave, refuses to leave. 
So that's going to create a bind because he would have to leave um, in order to interpret the symbols in the sky. Unless persuaded. Okay. So he needs to be persuaded uh, that he's been forgiven, perhaps. Okay. Um, this feels like a five-room dungeon. Feels like a classic five-room dungeon to me. So let's go ahead and put that in. Um, pretty classic five-room dungeon. I think the hook is that they f that the party. Um, well, let's have them look for the entrance. Okay. So um, a vast expanse known as the Forlorn Hills. Um, so they're out looking over um, the Forlorn Hills. Um, let's see if there's anything in the lore about the Forlorn Hills. Faerun, you're looking at my map, right? Um, just forgotten Realms, Realms Wiki, anything that's kind of interesting. Um, uh, elves back in the day, green um, elves. One of the three crowns in the kingdom of man, um, and the uh, wyverns uh, everywhere. Um, copper dragons, wyverns. Wyverns are good. Um, all right, the entrance is a wyvern's nest. Why not? Um, let's look at wyverns. I'm thinking a kind of tier three party, so I don't want to kill them right out of the, right away. Uh, a wyvern. It's a CR six. Um, a wyvern, and th and uh, let's get some some wormlings. Um, Wormlings are going to be like wyverns, but they're only going to have um, a few a few hit points, maybe. Uh, Claws, stinger. That's are all some pretty pretty serious damage from a wyvern. Um, I think I might just do uh, dragon wormlings. Uh, so a wyvern and uh, a wormling. Um, uh, let's see who breathes poison. Green dragons. Green dragon warming CR2. Perfect. Um, so a, a wyvern and a green dragon warming basically are going to be the two. Um, uh, looking out upon the hills, um, you um, spot um, a great arch. Um, a great black arch carved into the hill. Um, marks the place you have been seeking um, out from it crawls um, a leathery winged small leathering winged flying beast Flying beast. Um, bit of wyvern. And behind it, you see. Um, you hear, and from behind it, you hear. Cry of its mother. Okay. So, uh, room one is how do we get in? This has been taken over. The entrance has been taken over as a wyvern's nest. Um, so uh, that's at least a 45 minute uh, uh, combat entrance. Um, how to how to get in? How to get in? Uh, uh, must fight or dissuade wyvern. Uh, youngling. Use the green dragon wormling. Uh, to get in. So that's room one. Um, in terms of the layout of this thing, I'm thinking this is probably... Um, I'm probably going to have it branch. Um, branch like a peace sign. 
Uh, so there's the entrance, and then when you get in, there's three different tunnels, three cells. Okay, so um, the guard room um, has three three doors. Um, and each cell um, has a different magical effect in it. Cell one uh, is dead magic. Cell two uh, is wild magic. Cell three is a zone of silence. Um, and this is where uh, Inkyes actually lives. Okay. So we've got our basic layout of this thing um, at this point. Um, and let's see. <coughs> Guard dorm, three doors to three cells. And uh, let's... Um, Let's throw in, uh, let's throw in a puzzle. So if we go over to the dungeons section, toward the end of the dungeon section, we've got some puzzles and some riddles. Um, let's see. Uh, a countdown timer is pretty fun. Um, so uh, pressure plate. Uh, Countdown timer. Um, three gems, red, green, and blue begin glowing. Um, and uh, the countdown is in an arcane language. They don't understand. Um, uh, after um, several skill checks, the timer expires and the doors open. So this is a total fake out. Nothing bad is actually going to happen, um, but we're going to signal impending um, blades stuck in the walls, um, magical glows, uh, etc. So it is purely a test of courage. If they are courageous enough to stand their ground, the three doors to the three different cells uh, will open for them. It will only open for the courageous. Um, I want some constructs now. I want some different types of constructs um, that can uh, that can um, uh, come out and, and defend this place. So I'm going to look at constructs. Um, and the easiest thing to do is just. Google them up, basically. Um, so, animated objects, flying swords. Um, the Rock of Smothering is pretty fun. Um, let's look at some animated objects, or maybe some golems or golems. Um, there is the um, mechanical, uh, what is that, mechanical bowl. Um, let's look at some golems. And um, G, we've got a lot of stuff under G. Clay golems, flesh golems. I like gorgons. I've always liked uh, gorgons. Um, let's see. So a gorgon uh, might charge out of the zone of... Let's put a gorgon. Um, two gorgons. Two gorgons. CR10. Yeah. Um... Yeah, let's put two Gorgons in the dead magic zone. Uh, two Gorgons um, in a deep circular pit. Like a, like a matador's pit, basically. Um, magical chains along the walls. Clearly this was uh, some kind of uh, wacky uh, situation where people were maybe in a gladiatorial type thing. Something like that. Um, petrifying breath um, is good fun. And uh, 
What else will make this an interesting, interesting combat? I think the chain is going to reach out um, um, and try and grab, um, try and ensnare them. DC 15 strength uh, or restrained. Oh, let's make them more powerful than that. Let's make them a DC 20 strength or they're or you are restrained. Um, Petrifying gas is pretty nasty. Um, but we've done a lot with turning people to stone lately. Um, I may hold off on the petrifying gas. Um, just because we've done that a lot. They're mechanical bulls, basically. Uh, stone golems um, in the wild magic zone. Yeah, they won't be able to use their slow. Um, so let's go for something a little more uh, interesting. Uh, iron golem. Iron golems are pretty, pretty powerful. Um, yeah, let's do an iron golem at half hit points. Um, so 105 hit points. Um, ancient and rusted, um, but still a very powerful uh, creature given his poison breath. Um, Zone of Silence, Ink, yes. Um, is the Silence Orb is active and trapped. Uh, the tam tampering with this is going to cause, let's see, let's go for a trap. Um, what's the trigger? Give me a d6. Uh, roll a 5 on a d6. That's um, a doorknob block or handle. Um, so it has a dial. Um, causes what? Let's see, a d20. Mechanism of delivery. A 7. A trip wire. Causes wires. Okay. It's um, so not trip wires so much, but um, let's just say... Um, a web of, uh, uh, of adamantine mesh attempts to slice the party. Um, it is uh, all uh, lining the walls. Um, and it constricts in them, on them. Um, so that's going to be... Uh, DC 17 dex or take uh, this is a dangerous trap um, 40 hit points of slashing and restrained um, uh, orb must be destroyed um, and they are restrained um, and then the walls begin crumbling. Uh, uh, or must be destroyed. Um, the damage minimum is uh, 15. Um, it has 100 hit points. Uh, AC 10. It's easy to hit. Um, the orb must be destroyed in order for them to uh, to stop the walls caving in uh, within six rounds. Uh, um, otherwise, uh, they must escape without uh, without NKS's help. So we will have failed failed the mission. Um, NKS. Uh, low voice, uh, ponderous, and um, growl slightly, um, slightly growling maybe. Um, they must um, secure the blessing. Uh, the 
Ini. Uh, there's a portal to the old one, a guard, an ancient guard, and cell two. Uh, they must secure the blessing of the old one uh, to release him. Uh, at which point um, he will, uh, will leave them out um, and he will read the signs in the sky um, and then he will disappear. Um, okay. So about 45 minutes for the entrance. The guard room, that should take more than 15 Job. These different cells uh, could take 45 uh, easily, 30 to 45. Um, let's call it 30 because these are fairly easy. Um, and then uh, that's an hour. That's we're coming up on coming up on cl close to two. So let's say uh, let's give these 20 minutes. Um, 10. Uh, so that's an hour. Let's give that 45. Uh, these guys, yeah, the guard room's gonna take only gonna take like 10 minutes. Um, so two, two and a bit hours we're looking at here. Um, yeah, 90, uh, two and a half maybe uh, at the outset. If they go to all the rooms, uh, probably they won't. Uh, so probably they won't. Uh, they will skip stuff, and um, yeah, I think we've got a we got a five rumor again the peace sign kind of symbol. Um, they've got to go and free Inkyas, the um, the Andrus Sphinx from the penitentiary of silence, an ancient Netherese spellcaster prison, um, uh, so that they can he can interpret the signs. Um, and the signs are about the coming of um, uh, an interdimensional being uh, known as um, uh, Bright Flame and heralds the coming of Bright Flame um, into the material plane and uh, that is all that Mert needs to know in order to prepare for the coming of Bright Flame into the material realm I think that's it. I think we got an adventure. I'm going to run this um, in a couple of days, so I'm going to let this kind of percolate, basically, um, see if there's anything else I want to add to this. But I've got the basics. I'll print this out. I'll scribble on it a little bit. Um, I'll make sure I've got my, my different monsters and their stat blocks. And I'll always, always have the uh, Spontaneous Dungeon Master's Companion really to hand in case I need to rule up something on the fly. And uh, we'll play this out. We'll see how it goes. That's the idea.